Can I ask, please, that we will start with the next session? Please, we like to start with the next session. We will start with the next session, and I re expect that we will have silent in the room. If you would like to have private conversation, you can do it outside. Good afternoon again. My name is Hartmut Glaser. I am the executive secretary of CGI, the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Uh, CGI is the organization in Brazil responsible for defining recommendations, standards, and strategic directives for the Internet in Brazil, based on a multi-stake participation governance model. We are meeting here for the open forum fostering multi-stakeholder debate on Internet and elections. The panel is composed by Brazilian Internet Steering Committee members. We have Ms. Flavia Lefebvre, representative of the civil society. We have Mr. Enrique Faulhaber, representative of the business sector, and Mr. Luis Fernando Martins Castro, representative of the federal government. The role of the Internet for democratic process has been a permanent issue of the Internet governance agenda in the last decades. Initial utopia of unhindered cosm cosmopolitan and direct political participation for citizens throughout the world has progressively given room for some skepticism. The Cambridge Analytica scandal revealed a systematic effort by state and non-state actors to influence democratic practices 
through campaigns for spread disinformation. This open forum presents for the IGF community this year, 2018, the activities undertaken in Brazil by CGIBR, the steering committee of the internet in our country, to foster multi-stakeholder debate about internet elections and democracy. The debate will focus on the contributions provided by CGIBR. In details, the participation of our committee in the multi-stakeholder working group on internet and elections created by the Supreme Court, a multi-stakeholder seminar on the issue, a workshop with representatives from different sectors, the production of materials for general public. I have a booklet that you can see, Internet Democ Democracy and Elections, and other materials for general public and debate on the Brazilian law for electoral campaigns. As you know, Brazil concluded the last Sunday in October our general election and we choose a president, federal and state deputies and senators. For sure, the impact of the internet on the election in Brazil was uh, very strong. We cannot discuss this. This was a real reality. It is our great importance to understand this phenomena more deeply. We will start our conversation about this process that we uh, already uh, discussed in our country and now we will present to the plenary. The, the format will be following. Each panelist will have 15 minutes to introduce the point with different aspects. Then we will have on the end a discussion with the audience. We will start with Enrique Fauhaber, who will explain us uh, some of the details uh, and the procedures that we apply for our material uh, prepared by the steering committee in Brazil. Please, Enrique. Good morning to all. As glad I said, my name is Enrique Fauhaber. I'm one of the representatives of on the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee. Uh, uh, in fact, I represent the sector of uh, information technology. Uh, we, we make a, a, a division on our explanation here, and uh, I, I will talk uh, more about uh, some information about the Brazilian elections, and I will not focus primarily on the CGI efforts. Of course, uh, I, I, will, I will talk about them, but I will try to, to talk a little about uh, internet election in Brazil as an, an instance of the issue of internet and uh, elections, general theme. Uh, first, uh, I should make a disclaimer about my speech today and is open for IGF. Uh, as we are here to discuss internet and elections, I use recent Brazilian elections as an instance in, or case of the general issue. I'm not here to discuss politics in Brazil, but influence of internet on election as a, an observed trend all over the world. Uh, CGIBR had a big participation on the discussion about internet and elections in Brazil, as Glazer said. We promote several debates on fake news or misinformation, more properly talking. Uh, we issued on uh, this booklet uh, with guidelines about this issue in order to educate people uh, on internet use and also stimulate users to identify and not forward misinformation material, for example. Uh, at CGIBR, we support the multi stakeholder approach uh, putting together government, private sector, ONGs, and academy. And in some town, sometimes it's difficult to reach a consensus uh, between the board members about some themes. Uh, my evaluation here on the use of the internet on elections in Brazil are personal and uh, does not reflect a CGI-BR official position. Uh, after this contextual disclaimer, I will talk shortly today 
about the great, great importance of Internet on this year election in Brazil. Uh, it was not a surprise to see the increased role of social networks, messaging, tools and online communications on Brazil presidential elections. After what happened in the last US elections, Brexit votation, and also France elections, etc. We had a general election uh, last October in Brazil, where state governments, state and federal deputies, and a president was chosen. As you know, uh, Jair Bolsonaro was elected as next Brazilian president, start mandate on uh, next January uh, 20, uh, 2019. Mr. Bolsonaro was a candidate from a very small political party, PSL, which has, uh, has uh, in this, uh, in, uh, at this term, only one federal deputy on Congress, but elected in the next election 54 federal deputies, 76 state deputies, and four sen senators last October. Jair Bolsonaro, uh, as Partido Social Liberal, PSL candidate, has just eight seconds on a 12.5 minutes electoral TV program, which represents less than 0.01% of the total time, time of radio and TV. He participated just in one TV debate, and after it has been established, uh, on September 6, he did not, not participate in any TV or radio debate and make just a few TV interviews. In Brazil, we have, uh, you know, you have a heavy use of internet, and it happened on our elections too. Based on Datafolha survey, that's a statistical uh, agents, uh, about the use of the internet on elections uh, on October 3rd, 68% of the electors has an account on at least one social network. So you are a huge, you have a huge use of social networks in Brazil, uh, also in, on the election process. Uh, the elected president of the Republic, Jair Bolsonaro, reached on uh, 4 October uh, 2018 the mark of 20 million followers in, on his profiles on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. The data comes from the digital constants bytes, which tracks the indication accurately in Brazilian politics. With 20 million followers, Bolsonaro is on the list of politicians who with the largest number of digital allies in the world, uh, say bytes. In Latin America, the Brazilian is the most followed. He's ahead of the president of Argentina, Mauricio Macri, who has 10.2 million fans and the newly electing Mexico, Manuel Lopes Obrador, with 90.2 million. Bolsonaro also has more followers than uh, uh, Menor Macron, who has 7 million, uh, although it's 3.5 less than the US President Donald Trump, who has 70 million uh, followers, as you know. Uh, Bolsonaro made most of uh, his campaign on the internet through the live transmissions on Facebook and huge messaging from the, their friends through WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, and posts on websites and portals. For the first time in Brazilian elections, paid ads on the internet are allowed, or through paid TV and radio ads are forbidden. There are no information about how much ads are placed on platforms. And surprisingly, for many, Bolsonaro campaign does not claim any expense on internet, ad, internet ads at the moment. Based on some evidence of the use of boosting feeds on Facebook and messaging spam on WhatsApp, the Electoral Supreme Court asked the internet platform about internet ad expenses. But until now, there, are, uh, uh, there was no response for that inquiry. But there is a deadline for this response uh, next week. Fake news, or more correctly speaking, misinformation was massively used on Brazilian elections. It's hard to calculate the volume or, of that or even interpret how, how this practice has been important for the left election result anyway. In fact, WhatsApp, which is used strongly by candidate supporters, decreased the size of their message groups to 200 participants in Brazil. But it, it was detected, for example, that PSL used WhatsApp groups 
administered from outside from the US to overcome this limitation. Uh, Bolsonaro was elected on a democratic basis, following the rules of the game, unless the, ele the electoral Supreme Court judge in, in the near future that, it was, that he has broken any law. Otherwise, Mr. Bolsonaro campaigned through their support and heavily used the social media and messaging platforms with identified use of misinformation as a tool to capture more attention and engage strongly its own supporters. Other candidates in Brazil use the same social media tricks. It's a fact. Uh, I believe only more regulation on social media could avoid such practice. It's very hard to the electoral pro Supreme Court to judge after the election and try to find evidence on non-transparent social media and message platform who break the law. Uh, on election process, I support regulation over social media in a way that it was tried in Brazil on this election, uh, putting together the electoral Supreme Court and platform officials in order to find ways to trace illegal activities which can affect clean and democratic elections. In fact, some of us, CGIBR, coordinator, and also board members of CGI as individuals, participate as advisors to electoral Supreme Court Special Commission on Internet and Elections in order to evaluate the use of Internet and elections and fight against misinformation interact with platform principles in order to have help from them. This first experience in Brazil was not so successful uh, because it was the first election that you had so uh, great importance on the internet. But, but I believe we should insist on this practice. Uh, we live tough times. I recall the Canadian thinker Marshall McLuhan, who more than 50 years ago prophetically phrase that media is the message. In fact, I agreed with who said that today, social media is the message. Social media and message platforms are a kind of interactive and environment, environment which facilitate misinformation and manipulation because this cool media involves hurt and minds so deeply and so fast that makes old media, TV and radio, which are considered in the past as alienating platform as a kid toy compared to the power of present internet tools. There are no easy solutions for the dangerous use of internet tools on internet. I believe it's a challenge for us to continue to discuss this as an internet governance issue and address seriously platform regulation in order to preserve democracy and trust. Thank you. Thank you, Enrique. Some introduction about numbers and statistics and network in Brazil. Now we will hear uh, Miss Flavia. Please, your contribution, Flavia. Uh, good morning, everyone. I want to thank the uh, IGF organization for open to us this space to share our significant uh, experience now in October. Uh, as Enrique reported, CGI regarding, uh, regarding its legal attribution enacted with the, its uh, creation de decree and, MC and Marco Civil the Internet, our internet law, decided to follow the use of the internet for political propaganda. Our object objective was to contribute to the important, the important rights for the preservation of the internet as an open space were not affected by the actions of the parties and control bodies, in this case the Superior Electoral Court. Brazil spent its last October through the electoral process for president, federal states deputies and senators. The electoral process was being marked by usage of personal data for the massive sending of messages, many times in disrespect with the electoral legis legislation and with Marco Civil da Internet, our law inter uh, of Internet. Researchers 
institutes and universities showed that those messages had, uh, had a very strong information disorder character through WhatsApp, by especially the part of the social liberal political party candidate, which represents the ultra, ultra right positioning, which has ended being elected along with 52, as Enrique said, of his party. It's worth saying that in the last election, it counted only with eight deputies. This scenario uh, has revealed that had happened massive message sending uh, with not only lying contents, but also very highly offensive to the moral of their and left candidate by the Workers' Party, Partido dos Trabalhadores, PT, PT. The Brazilian electoral law underwent recent uh, reformation into 2017 to regulate boost political propaganda message within internet. According to the changes, a paid political propaganda on the internet was banned, but an exception was made, boost of contents on internet since. It can be uh, identified in an unmistakable way, hired exclusively by the party, coalition, or their representatives, uh, only vi viewing the promotion of candidates or their, their associations. And the law criminalized the message sent or um, commentaries which have a, a specific finality to offend the honor or denigrate that image of a candidate party or association. Apart from the omission of the Supreme Electoral Court regarding the facts denounced by the media, we must certainly think about the role of the platforms in the electoral process and its responsibility to work as a stage of public debates in view of commercial practices that are causing damage for the democratic institutions of our country. The Brazilian case was not the first that revealed some serious problems related to the commercial operation of the platform, such as uh, illegally obtaining personal database of millions of users, as happened with the Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, as well as three other leaks in less uh, than a year, one year involving the same Facebook, use and analysis uh, of personal data for the pur purpose of influencing opinions and modulating behaviors and voting. And three, lack of commitment of the platforms to follow the massive flow of disinformation in their networks without uh, any control and no compliance with the electoral law. Having identified the main problems that occurred in the elections, it is unquestionable that we must take care in a way to uh, not jeopardize or compromise relevant rights as the guarantee of freedom of expression and to avoid censorship. We don't want, for example, to compromise legal tools that prevent third party uh, content uh, providers from uh, liability, as expressed in the Marco Civil da Internet. We don't want, for example, to compromise the legal tools that prevent the provider's uh, responsibility, responsibility for the people's contents as it's, uh, um, it is expressed on the uh, Brazilian internet law. On the other hand, we also do not want to relativize the responsibility of the platforms for the maintain, maintenance of personal data and for the transfer to other institutions or for the illegal control of the flow information and net neutrality in this case and for putting us in a vulnerable and insecure situation when they lend us services because this would mean uh, that rights conquered with a lot of effort would be compromised. 
such as the Consumers Protection Law, the Civil Internet, the Marco Civil da Internet, and the guarantees uh, enacted with the Electoral Law. Thank you very much. Thank you, Flavia. We will have now the third participant, Luis Fernando. You have the floor. Thank you, Flavia. Thank you, Flavia. Thank you, Enrique. Well, we listened about the process and, and the action of CGI during the electoral period. In the morning, I had the opportunity to present the guideline that we have prepared for the election and for the themes. And maybe not all of, of you were present at this session. Uh, and I will make a brief explanation about it. In the beginning of the year, we from the CGI have been invited by the, uh, the Electoral Supreme Court to join a group advisory board on internet and elections and to try to avoid fake news. That is a, a quite new problem, but all of them were aware of the problem looking at uh, the experience in the US, in France, and they were afraid how to deal with this problem. And they believed that asking some specialist to join this group, they could avoid or minimize the problem. And in this group, we had people not only from the CGI on the, or from academ academia, but we had also people from the federal police, Ministry of Defense, Army, uh, and we from CGI realized that uh, the, the court was dealing with the problem as if it was a national security issue. And in accordance to our principles, we were very preoccupied that the election could be uh, controlled in terms of free of ex speech or that it could exist some kind of uh, censorship. And we insisted not to try to monitor the network and not to try to, to monitor or to censor uh, uh, the, the, the debate in internet. And I can say that this point of view prevailed. And in a certain way, the, the, the court felt comfortable because they didn't have uh, tools or people to manage this. I, I listened from the, 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 the president of the Supreme Electoral Court that we have only 200 uh, uh, technicians or assistants to, to monitor the whole country. It, it's very complicated. And they decided to work on a post factum uh, uh, attitude. That means let things go and those who commit any, any fault will be sanctioned. That was the idea. Then in our, our side, we, we had made a very interesting and very comprehensive uh, seminar in the month of April 2018 with multi-stakeholders, uh, participants from different areas from uh, as lawyers, journalists, social scientists, uh, uh, technicians, and from this very rich uh, three days deba debate, we got the material with which we prepared this uh, guideline. And we started spreading this content for, for the people and I proposed, and, and it was accepted, to make kind of partnership with the electoral justice to uh, communicate this work for judges and for assistants, judicial assistants, who would work in the elections. To explain how the, uh, the net works, the social media works, uh, we had a problem, as uh, uh, Flavia brought to us, that our legislation authorized the, the pushing of, of um, information in, in, in the network. Uh, that means people could buy uh, uh, support 
I, I, I say this is a fake support that you can obtain by paying the platform. And I believe that it's no, not very healthy for the election because you create a, a not real audience for uh, any candidate. Well, after the election or during the election, we had a very, very, very hard problem. I don't know if you are aware, but in Brazil we have more than 30 parties and at least half of them had candidates. What happened? We happened that the big center or the parties that are situated in the, the middle of the spectrum uh, of, of politics uh, presented several uh, candidates and only two of them from the extreme right and from the extreme left came to the second turn and um, I, I could say that none of them represented the majority of the country and both of them maybe one can have been more able to use the network um, and they started using all the, the measures, all the ways to, to, to bring their propaganda. Uh, there are several aspects that uh, Flavia brought that now are under investigation by the court, as for instance, uh, f financing by companies that is uh, prohibited, uh, the, the buying of, of da databases that is uh, also prohibited. Uh, sending messages from abroad that is also prohibited. Uh, in the case that any of this practice is fully proved, the candidate may be uh, sent away, not uh, legalized, not authorized to take power, what is very, very rare and I don't think it will happen because anyway, as uh, Enrique told, uh, the, 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 the right-oriented candidate that is a very, very rough man, coarse, uh, that, that has a coarse uh, speech, misogyny uh, speech, uh, he was elected by the majority of the country. Mostly because uh, the other side uh, was um, a little, how, has not so much uh, prestige in, in that moment. Because I, 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 I should say that uh, despite the fact that the candidate is a very good man, it was my colleague at the law school, he's a socialist, he's a Marxist, uh, he writes very good text, but he's 100% left oriented. And I should say that uh, the country didn't want this for the next years. And the other guy uh, got the opportunity to, to be elected. At the end of the day, I think there is many things to be learned from this process. Uh, I insist, as I told in the morning, that we, we don't have to, cens to, to censorate and no censorship in that is, is good. I think that uh, our tribunal, the, the court, was very passive. They uh, uh, leaned very much on, on Facebook, on WhatsApp, and and they expected the platforms to, to do what they are, were not doing. That means they expected the platforms to control any access. I remember during one uh, session of this committee, of this consulting committee, uh, the, the, the pro, uh, persecutor uh, said, no, no, we, the, the law allowed the use of bots. We will not uh, take any measure for this. And he even made joke uh, about our position from CGI and our, our other people that are more liberal, saying, in the beginning, you said that we, we should not control content. And now you complain that you, you, you are saying that we should act in a policy uh, as, as in a more restrict way. I think uh, we learned a lot about this. I'm not so sure about the, the best way to deal with uh, this situation that I don't uh, only call as fake news, 
but uh, we must understa understand the most, that most of the people like junk news, mainly when they refer to the opposite, when they uh, bring bad things about the other the candidate. And, and to finalize, I say as uh, Demi Gedge, uh, our, uh, our senior member uh, of CGI says, that most of this junk uh, news, they circulate inside a, uh, a bubble because you have two different, very, very uh, polarized bubbles and in which you have full of lies and very, very coarse speeches and sometimes uh, it, it can call attention. But in my point of view, this uh, global problem, I have listened du during the whole day or in the event. In the morning, I listened to, to the representative of Nigeria. Uh, she said, we have in our country 200 different uh, ethnic group, groups, and any of them will say that the other uh, are the other are saying fake news or bringing fake news. I think that's a problem of democracy. I think the best way to combat uh, fake news is bringing information and opening the space with ac accountability for those who work in the wrong way. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Luis Fernando. Probably I like only to include a new or other information. I don't know if you know in Brazil, the internet is not regulated by the country. The internet in Brazil is added value service. Uh, no regulator, no ministry, no government have any control over the internet. And the steering committee is the entity, the multi-stakeholder governance model. Uh, we don't have the power to put uh, laws in place but we send recommendations to the government, we send recommendations uh, to the court, to the prosecutors. We have a very strong relationship with all stakeholders, but because of this, uh, very often, CGI, the steering committee, is requested to express opinions, to send some support, and to give some input for the government and for other activities. This is probably a good sight that we have more flexibility it's not a strong control coming from one side because all the society, all segments, all sectors of the society are part of the process. And Flavia mentioned very often, Marco Civil, the Bill of Rights in Brazil was a result of a long debate after CGI put in place our principles, our 10 uh, uh, principles that we use, the guides for the best use of the internet in the country. These principles on the end uh, was the seat for uh, our uh, Bill of Rights and we are happy that we have this way to, uh, to manage the internet in Brazil. Some things uh, is easier if you have strong laws, but in this kind we prefer the debate, we prefer the discussion, we prefer the uh, decision. Uh, sometimes it's not win-win-win for everyone or win 100% for everyone. Every part needs to give up and the win-win with 90% or with 80% is the best result for uh, the transparent and democratic way that we work in Brazil. Uh, I will give some time for the plenary, for the audience. We don't like to have a political discussion, so please avoid local Brazilian local problem, our problems, we need to solve this in our country, but we like to share with you, you listen to three speakers, if you have specific questions and we have an answer, we will try to answer. If not, we will say, not this time, wait our next election, I don't know. We have some minutes, so if someone likes to, uh, to quest, uh, have a question, I see in the, on the please. Hello everyone, my name is Emanuela and I'm from Brazil and I'm a Isaac Fellow. What I would like to ask is that, but well, in the elections a lot of fake news were spread in WhatsApp and we have a problem because although we defend net neutrality, we accept zero rating practices so a lot of people can't search for the font of the information and do the fact checking. So I'd like to ask you guys, what do you think about this and what could be a possible solution? Thank you. Who will answer? 
thank you for your question. Um, uh, I want first clarifying uh, a point. Uh, uh, despite the ISPs uh, don't be regulated by the Anatel, that is the uh, regulator, uh, telecommunication uh, agency regulator of telecommunication, uh, we have in Brazil the consumer law, that is a law that uh, oblige uh, many uh, charges to the, the platforms. We have the civil uh, law, Marco civil law, that uh, protect our personal data. And we have the federal constitution then, and the competition law also, because this platform uh, are in, in, indeed a great monopoly that uh, act like this, not only in Brazil, but in our planet uh, now. Uh, and then uh, they are, uh, they have to uh, observe the law in Brazil. And the responsibility is not to break net neutrality uh, obligations or other guarantees, but to uh, don't put us, put the Brazilian electors in a vulnerable situation uh, because they are taking our uh, data, uh, personal data, to modulate our um, vote and the, the result of the, the, um, the research made by universities, uh, Rio de Janeiro University and other uh, institutes of research uh, show, revealed that our dates was used for, for manipulate uh, voting. And the, in Brazil, the situation is um, first because uh, uh, we have 120 million connections, uh, 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 like us inform Anatel, and 109 are in uh, data um, limited planes with zero, zero rating, and then these people can't use internet to check fake news, to che check information, and they uh, rest um, limited to the uh, news that they receive. Then the situations, and in the lower classes, our research, our, uh, the research uh, of access of um, CGI revealed that in the lower classes, uh, D and E, 80 percent uh, access the internet only for the mobile uh, devices, and in the C class, only 50 percent access by uh, only access the internet by uh, mobile devices. Then this situation uh, is grave, and I we uh, we in the CGI, we uh, will uh, investigate this and the, our superior court also. Thank you. Enrique will also include some comments and in the, in the, then Luis Fernando too. Uh, I make some uh, few comments, uh, slightly different from Flavia's position and shorts, of course. In fact, there is no, no consensus about if the rating is a, is uh, is uh, an, is a net neutrality uh, break, there's no there's no consensus in Brazil on that that's the that's a, an open point. But imagine, even if uh, zero rating is is a, is breaking net neutrality, imagine if we have a total uh, digital inclusion in Brazil. Uh, if everyone can have access to the whole internet, not just to Facebook or other things, if uh, the results will be different, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So uh, we, we should fight for digital inclusion, uh, of course. But 
I, I don't believe it's, uh, it's uh, totally, uh, totally uh, defined in consensus that, that, that this, is, this was really an issue. Luis, please. Just to complete uh, the comment of Manuela, uh, the law, the, the, the electoral law that authorized the use of Facebook and pushing uh, uh, of contents, they were very focused on this kind of platform. And, and they imagined that these platforms would have the name of the one who hired and who paid for the service, who, where it comes from, and mainly the content. Uh, making or bringing some accountability to the process. But what we observed in the process that most of the, 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 the content and the propaganda was done through uh, WhatsApp. And that I think that all of you are aware, they explained that they have a technical restriction to, because of cryptography and that they cannot control content. And more than this, it's, it's supposed to be a peer-to-peer -peer communication that should not be subject to this kind of control. But when people realized that the massive uh, uh, shootings were occurring, uh, we tried to propose to the court to, to make uh, some kind of control or to monitor asked uh, to be monitored this uh, uh, unusual behaviors and the court said no since the law allowed uh, bots we will not do this it's because of this that i say that we learned a lot in this election okay thank you thank you here in the front a lady please uh. Uh, my name is Pilar Sainz, I'm from Colombia and work with Charisma Foundation. Um, and I have to say as Colombian that we have several similar problems in our election that was to, uh, this year also. Uh, and we share a lot of the problems with the Brazilian ones. Uh, so most of the time I was listening all the problems and say that's the same, that is exactly the same problem but actually we were focused on other kind of problems that are related with elections and internet in my country in this moment that is the use of software for the election uh, brazil has a electronic vote and for me it's very concerned that there is not one discussion about that in this panel for example I know that the problems with uh, fake news and disinformation is something that is is to be is 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 something emerging, but uh, there is not the only problem with technology about elections. I don't know if some of you uh, has uh, studied the problem with the software and the use of electronic vote and the problems with the transmission of the information or the access to the software uh, to analysis, for example. And if this kind of uh, other issues is something that is in the public uh, knowledge uh, and, and is part of the consideration of the uh, scenario of internet and election in Brazil. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Thanks for your, for your question. It's very hard to explain. I remember once, I, I studied here in France and I had a, a Colombian friend, and once I made a joke in the Congress and I said, in my country, uh, we are very proud that in three hours time after the uh, closing of the election, we know who won it. And he said, no, in my country, it's much better. We know it two months uh, before, <laughs> okay? He was joking of course, uh, but you raised a very important uh, uh, question, that is the safety, transparency, accountability of the electoral system, the machine, the voting machine, okay? 
and that's quite a dogma to to to, to the people from the courts. Whenever uh, I'm from the order of uh, uh, bar uh, lawyers bar association Brazil, whenever someone uh, raise any doubt or uh, make any question, it seems that you are uh, uh, committing a crime. You are you, you you are killing the president or killing the pope because you it's better to to bless the. Um, Mary the Virgin, then to, 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 to bring any doubt against the system. We had, just for inform, approved in, in the few last years a law that said that 20% of the voting uh, machines sh uh, should have a, a printer to make a double check, okay? And many people, uh, m many parties wanted this to, to, to create an, a physical system to check the, the voting process. And the Supreme Court declared this law inconstitutional. Okay? That's a critical situation. I think that all transparent process can be checked. There is no problem. But I'm not, I, I, I lost, in, I, I'm one of the losers in this point of view. Please. Um, good afternoon, I'm João Branche, uh, independent consultant in Brazil. I'd like to do one question uh, to, the, the, to the panelists about anonymity. Uh, actually, we had uh, hidden identities were part of the debate, uh, an important part of the fake news debate in Brazil. If we look at Facebook, for instance, they, they banned uh, lots of profiles because of hidden identities or fake identities. Uh, but in WhatsApp, there is no uh, identity. Like People are just uh, sending, uh, uh, forwarding messages, and the original message cannot be identified uh, for who uh, uh, is the responsible for that. Uh, and it creates, it, for me, in my vision, it's part of the problem in creating a, a, a polluted system, uh, information uh, system, uh, by the diffusion of anonymous uh, uh, messages. And so I would ask you two questions. One, uh, can WhatsApp be considered a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, messenger in this context? Uh, of lo uh, massive groups and massive forwarding message, uh, 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 profiles? This is one question. And second, uh, how do you uh, uh, analyze the, 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 the problem of anonymity in, in the effect of fake news? Or is that, is that a problem at all? Flavia, you would like to answer? Yes, please. With my difficulty with the language, but I will try. Uh, thank you, João. Uh, despite our constitution, uh, federal constitution in Brazil, prohibiting, uh, forbidden the anonymatum, uh, in our civil law, we have a protection of pseudonymous. That is a right important to. Uh, that is an important tool to uh, protect. Uh, freedom of expression and other and our uh, democracy, I think. Uh, in case uh, of the um, message sent in, uh, by the uh, social party, liberal social party, they use uh, public groups in WhatsApp. They t uh, uh, um, we don't want. Uh, Inclusi uh, including because Marco Civil da Internet forbidden, uh, mo uh, that the platforms monitoring the, the messages. This is uh, not permitted in Brazil, but the groups uh, opening uh, groups of, of family, of friends, of time de futebol, como que fala isso? Football clubs. And the, the university uh, uh, research and the institutes that uh, make investigation with the, 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 the system of uh, boosting message, boot, boosting message uh, uh, have 
open the, 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 uh, the, the content of the message. And then, in this case, uh, I think the superior court uh, had the, the, the tools to be more incisive in the control of the uh, ethic, um, balance, and uh, respect of the law in the electoral process. But who could be deemed liable in a case that the message is just uh, uh, going forward and forward and forward? You know what I mean? Yes, but the 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 flux, the flow of the sending message was not normal. Uh, the, was ab absolutely. Uh, unnormal the, the, the situation. Uh, uh, we have one person be uh, the, administra the manager of uh, 100, 200 groups and a sending message, million of message by minutes, by seconds and the, the use was uh, unnormal. And that for us, that I, uh, f for that, that uh, us defend, uh, that the platform has also responsibility because in Brazil, uh, the, um, the service uh, have to be secure. Don't, uh, it's not permitted put the consumers in the vulnerable situation, in insecure situation, and this situ in, uh, uh, the case in Brazil uh, show that this uh, obligation was not accomplished. The time is running, but okay, one and two, and then we will finish. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. I want to respond to the, the, the issue raised by the lady from Brazil and the gentleman there. To say, you know, I'm, I'm a messenger from South Africa. I, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, in the law, there should be a, a provision that deals with uh, unwanted or illegal content, wherein the, in South Africa, we've got what you call uh, the takedown procedure. If you feel that this type of content or this type of information is incorrect or is illegal, what you, you do is that you can inform the uh, internet service provider to say um, this type of content is, is illegal, but then the, the, there's a certain standard that you need to meet. You need to identify yourself. There's a form that you complete, and the service provider is forced to take, that, take down that information. And if, if he or she doesn't take that information, then you can take him to court. Unlike a situation where you just allow the information there, uh, and then it confuse the whole country. So. We, we have got a procedure which you can uh, ask, uh, ask the internet service provider to take down that information, but you need to prove that um, who are you, uh, you need to, to meet certain standards, and then after that, the, the internet service provider must take down that information from the web. Thank you. Thank you. Comment? Well, uh, as Flavia presented, we have a law we call uh, the fr internet civil framework that doesn't allow anyone but the judge to uh, to stop a message or to put down a website. That means that no platform, no intermediary can do it. Um, in our case, any any decision to stop circulation or to 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 eliminate content must come from the judge. But what we had, we had uh, several cases where the platforms uh, uh, just um, sent away or uh, disconnected some accounts because of uh, uh, the, the misuse of the terms of use, the disrespect of the terms of use. And it's in a certain way, it, it brings some doubt either if the, the, the platform is playing the, their natural right to mediate the conversation in, in terms of their uh, terms of use, or if they are more uh, orientated for left or right or sympathizers of one or other group. 
I will give you the, t the chance, but wait. The lady first, and then you as the last. Uh, thank you uh, for your comments. Uh, I'm Simone. I'm from uh, Charles University in Czech Republic. Um, I just wanted to ask, I guess, Mr. Fernando, um, you talked a lot about like funding, funding in the campaigns, um, and also about these bot accounts that were coming from inside. Oh, sorry. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, the funding and the bot accounts because you talked a lot about like the internal, like the the campaigns inside using the bot accounts. Um, but what do you think was the role of the outside influence, um, the the bot accounts that originated from other countries? Um, did that have a large role? Do you think? Do you think it was a bigger role than the bot accounts that were uh, from the internal sources? Well, uh, as we said. The use of foreign accounts is completely prohibited. If it's proved that someone used this kind of uh, service, uh, all the, the consequences may, may be applied, even losing the right to, 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 to be in power. Uh, but the proof uh, of doing, of what has been done is very difficult. But we have some uh, uh, cases that people bring uh, that shows that several numbers uh, from which the message in WhatsApp came from were from abroad. And now this situation is under investigation and theoretically it might bring some legal consequences, but it's absolutely prohibited, okay? Please, your name. Uh, Tiago from Brazil as well. Uh, currently studying at Tilburg University in the Netherlands. So yeah, I've been accompanying from abroad everything that was happening in the elections because it's also a matter, a matter of concern for me. Well, um, I do believe since we're discussing about the multi stakeholderism role in this issue, we should try to analyze what's the role of its sector in in addressing that, uh, it might be a naive idea for, for a young scholar, but I do believe there are a lot of studies that say the problem is not only about the fact checking that this has been doing by civil society in a quite uh, good way so, so far, but we also have the problem of source checking. And for source checking, this means finding who was the source of the uh, of the information, the original information, uh, you sometimes need the help uh, of the of the platforms because they control the channel, and they we have some metadata that they have, and if they can be held liable if they don't uh, provide this kind of data that's not. Uh, related with the removal of the content itself, but it's a, a data that's important so you can track the source. Uh, this is very important for, for the end decision that will come by the court, because the court is the one that will build this trust, uh, like you said, uh, like Mr. Fer Luis Fernando said, uh, in Brazil we have the Marcus Civil uh, that says that the, the final decision for removing of a content has to come from the court and this is explained uh, in many democratic societies because the courts are the ones that have the trust of the public to decide if this content has some harmful content or not. And so what I mean, I do believe that maybe this cooperation needs to, uh, we need to have rules that strengthens the, the liability of companies not for remove, m removing content but for helping in this source checking approach because even in WhatsApp for example it's true that the, the, the communication system is encrypted there but no no message that was shared in WhatsApp is started there it always started from some blog some newspaper probably a, a fake one with fake content but uh, if is there is a way to trace back where the source is, it might be a beginning of uh, a solution. Uh, I can't say this right now, like I'm just like guessing based on some studies, I'm not so sure, but that's one suggestion. 
Any comment from the speakers here in the panel? Just one thing, and then I, I pass to you. Um, I want to say that um, the fake news properly, it's only the top of the iceberg. The problem is the use uh, not ethic of our personal data, the treatment, the collect, the use, and the manipulate and direction. As happened with um, Cambridge Analytica and Facebook, and as happened in Brexit, uh, and here, uh, one of the institute, uh, research institutes uh, results showed uh, w um, what way they use it to identify the neutral uh, uh, elector, the negative elector, the positive elector, and to decide what message sent for each one. And then this is the problem. The problem is bigger. The problem is not the fake news, because the fake news, the uh, use uh, of uh, economic power, these are antigos, old, old problems. The new problem is how we will uh, down any uh, degree of governance to the use of algorithms of use of uh, our data. And I think the multi-sectorial discussion is fundamental to uh, found the right way to resolve our problems. The time is over. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, audience, for your patience and for your participation. I think the plenary always has the right to be present with questions and comments. Thank you, uh, the speakers of the panel. And now we have our lunch time, and then we have a nice afternoon with other meetings and discussions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>